Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ian Cameron's my name. This is a live intro uh, for a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we'll then go into a pre-recorded presentation from me, and then we'll follow that with live uh, question and answer. Uh, your questions will be via chat, and I will answer them as they come in. Uh, there's some delay in that function, so if you can please pre-prepare questions and have some available by the time my presentation finishes. The presentation's for about 25 or 26 minutes. So we'll get started. Welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name's Ian Cameron. I work at the John Walsh Centre for Rehabilitation Research at the University of Sydney. Uh, the title of this webinar is Better Practice for Vocational Rehabilitation. Uh, what I'm presenting is the conclusions from a systematic review. The background uh, to this project is that the New South Wales State Insurance Regulatory Authority commissioned the John Walsh Centre for Rehabilitation Research to conduct a rapid review on vocational rehabilitation. So we'll just spend a couple of moments defining some terms here. So vocational rehabilitation, they're programs or services that aim to assist individuals with disability or workers with an injury or other health problem to obtain or return to work after their injury or illness. So there is a related term called occupational rehabilitation but that generally is taken to mean assisting people who are already at work. And a rapid review, what is it? Um, it's a form of knowledge synthesis, uh, which is like a systematic review, but with simpler methodology, with the aim of producing information that's immediately useful. So in preparing this, rapid review. We did uh, literature search uh, for 10 years from 2009 to 2019 about re vocational rehabilitation and we searched um, three main international um, databases. The aim of our project was to identify best practice for vocational programs, vocational rehabilitation programs and that they are supporting workers' rehabilitation and recovery. We had a number of sub-questions about models uh, of vocational rehabilitation, about what the components of those models were, if there are particular target groups, and if different approaches were needed for people in different target groups. When we think about return to work after injury or illness, I think most of us will be thinking, well, injury was sustained at work. But this topic also includes people who've had injury or illness outside work and who are trying to get back to the workforce. So we've produced a document, uh, which is shown in this slide, that's available on that uh, CIRA um, link and just a little bit of background before we get into the detail um, there is a lot of concern about day, delayed return to work uh, the reason is that not being in work is detrimental to injured and ill people um, and in addition that there's a big cost uh, for that there's some cost to the person, but there's a greater cost to society. And a very important point is that the longer the person's away from work, the harder it is to get back to work. So there are various figures quoted, but generally there's a relatively small chance of getting back to work if the worker has been away for more than six months. The 
There is a lot of research that uh, work is beneficial for health, and that's been clarified to good work is beneficial to health, recognising that occasionally work uh, can be difficult or dangerous, but that's really rare in an Australian setting. And so there's a variety of statements from the Royal Australasian College of Physicians and more specifically from the Australasian Faculty of Occupation and Environmental Medicine within the College of Physicians. And so they've identified that work is beneficial to health uh, and they've um, provided statements supporting that and they've also um, aiming to um, have programs supporting return to work uh, implemented and embedded uh, in a society. So just to give you some important take-home messages, so this is best practice for vocational rehabilitation, should start early. There should be multiple components that are linked up. I'll say more about that. So broadly, there's a healthcare component, a coordination component, and a workplace component. So the worker needs to be engaged in each of these areas. The vocational rehabilitation program needs to be individualised. Workers vary enormously, as well as workplaces vary enormously. And then many vocational rehabilitation programs require modification of the work and modification of routines or equipment. So I thought I'd introduce two workers to you. Um, these are people who I have um, tried to assist through treatment. These are anonymised, so only the general details are correct and the photos are not of the people. So you'll see why they're contrasting experiences. Firstly, we've got Mary, she's aged 59. She's had a stroke and she works as a cleaner. Bruce is 35, had a traumatic brain injury and works as a technical assistant. So you don't know much about them yet and we're going to talk about them um, intermittently during this presentation. So you've met them now. So in the rapid review, we identified a number of issues. Um, and these are really try trying to, to give you some general points about things to think about. The evidence does show that best practice vocational re rehabilitation programs can increase the rate of return to work and have other benefits, particularly lessening cost. Uh, work is the, foc work, the worker is the focus, but employers need to be involved, engaged, and they have employ uh, important roles. Uh, the expertise in the workplace can vary markedly. Some larger employers have very well-developed and uh, very effective vocational rehabilitation programs. But that's a big contrast to a small business, maybe with one or two workers, and that business may have, in fact, no past experience with an injured worker. And so that situation is going to be difficult. There does need to be cooperation and collaboration between workers, employers, and other stakeholders. These different parties will have different perspectives and uh, there is friction in this area. It is hard sometimes. And there'll be particular issues if the injury occurred at work and if there's a perception that perhaps unsafe practices or environment contributed to the work injury. And as a background, we do need to be thinking about what are called the social determinants of health, because these apply uh, in this situation. So the World Health Organization has defined social determinants of health as the conditions in which people um, live, are born, grow up, 
work and age. So they're around income, education, um, socioeconomic status, uh, and access to resources. So th these are complicated issues. There's no doubt about that. If we look at the evidence, uh, there are many studies that show the effectiveness of vocational rehabilitation programs. Trying to draw out the important points, most effective programs start early, they're multi-component, meaning that they link health services, workplace and provide coordination. Uh, these successful programs need to embrace work modification and a number of workers will require psych psychological and social support in addition to whatever's changed in terms of work. Uh, and there's emerging evidence that workers at greater risk of delayed recovery can be identified early and assisted to recover. And a local study uh, that's now in the international literature is the WISE study, and I've provided the, the reference there. So the WISE study and other studies have used an assessment that aims to detect the likelihood of future work disability. And this is the assessment tool. Um, it's spelt Erebro, it's pronounced Erebro, musculoskeletal pain questionnaire short form. Um, and you can see there is uh, a reference for it. Um, the writing is too small, but essentially it has 10 questions and the questions range from uh, the length of time the pain's been present, how severe the pain is, how much the pain is interfering with a person's daily life and what the person's expectation is about getting back to work and normal life. And the way it's scored is that a score of greater than 50 it's 50 out of 100 does uh, predict future work disability, meaning a longer time to return to work and, and indeed a less complete return to work. If we come back to our two workers, a bit more information. Mary, when you talk to her, is unsure about return to work. Uh, she's concerned about her health. Could she have another stroke? And also, um, she happens to be employed uh, by a company that has quite complicated return to work processes, lots of forms and approvals, and really nothing's going to happen fast with that employer. Bruce, uh, by contrast, is quite keen to return to work, and in fact, very keen to return to work, maybe even too keen to return to work. Uh, fortunately, he has an employer who's readily able to modify work. He's had quite a severe traumatic brain injury, but the employer uh, can modify and um, is, is really very collaborative in their approach. And also, uh, Bruce has the advantage that he's got excellent coordination from uh, the, brain in the local brain injury rehabilitation service. So you can see who's likely to get back to work between Mary and Bruce, even without knowing more. So if we look at the components of uh, the vocational rehabilitation program, first of all, we've got the healthcare component, uh, and there are lots of different models um, through the person's general practitioner. There are specialised vocational rehabilitation service, and there are rehabilitation at work programs. Uh, unfortunately, my observation would be in Australia that the healthcare component is often removed, to some extent at least, from vocational work rehabilitation programs. The second component, service coordination, aims to improve communication within the workplace and coordinate healthcare providers and other stakeholders, including the insurer. The workplace, as I said, needs active engagement and commitment from the worker's employer. But how do we link them up? That is really the question. 
We also need to recognise that there are personal factors, and I've alluded to these before, that are important in getting a worker back to work. So, for example, attitudes about return to work, social factors such as support from family, friends and work colleagues. And the manager, the person's manager, is in a very important and influential role. So if we examine the components in more detail, um, the healthcare component, uh, there will be a variety of healthcare professionals involved. Um, they need to work as an interdisciplinary team. Their approach should be individualised. Uh, is, it is important to have medical involvement and appropriate medical involvement because there are, may well be issues about the most appropriate certification of capacity for work. Uh, service coordination systems vary a lot and can be quite disconnected. Uh, there is quite a lot of knowledge needed to navigate some of those systems. Um, the, the coordination component also is aiming to communicate effectively with the worker and others with whom the worker needs to interact. The workplace needs flexibility work with modification, being able to provide extra training or supervision or support if needed. And as I said before, all the components should be linked up. So let's just pause for a minute and just reflect on the system in which we all work. Can we say that systems that we interact with uh, will support effective vocational rehabilitation as has been identified in this re review. And more specifically, uh, what can we all do to improve things? Certainly I believe there are some things I can change, but there are some things, particularly system factors, that um, are beyond my control and so where those crop up as an issue, I'll need to assist the worker to work uh, within that inevitable system. And certainly plenty of workers do comment to me that they, uh, they feel trapped into a system over which they've got limited control. So I hope you've made a resolution about what you can do to improve vocational rehabilitation in your setting. If we look a bit more, why might multi-component programs work? Um, the literature suggests that there's an integration of different perspectives to add up to um, a more effective return to work strategy. So through cooperation and commitment to a common goal, uh, there's less disability. And in terms of the results, um, yes, there, there are now many uh, programs through rigorous research that have been shown to improve and lead to sustained, improved work reintegration. And some of those programs, not all, some of those programs have shown a reduction in cost. And there's a suggestion that some of the programs, in fact, have enhanced overall recovery in terms of um, reducing disability in daily life overall. So we're getting uh, towards the end now. So let's think about who will benefit from vocational rehabilitation. Well, as I've said there, everyone potentially, um, but there'll be certain workers who will be a bit different so workers with severe disabilities or adverse psychosocial circumstances will be more challenging to assist. So if I give you some examples, an office worker with a university degree who slips and breaks her arm at work, um, in general, her prognosis is likely to be reasonable. Another example, a labourer run over by a forklift in a factory on 
his second day at work with lower extremity fractures, that vocational rehabilitation for him is going to be difficult for sure. Um, now, a few contrasts, a self-employed accountant with a spinal cord injury. Uh, in fact, um, this accountant, because he has control over his employment, even though he's had a very severe injury, has a good prognosis at least uh, for returning to work uh, on a part-time basis. However, a carpentry apprentice with a high fall at work with a severe brain injury that's going to be very difficult, but, but equally there may well be greater resources available to use for vocational rehabilitation for him. And the last one, a labourer with a back injury of work, sounds bad at this stage, but if he has an Erebro score of 30 out of 100, that's saying that despite the way it looks, uh, he's expecting to get back to work and get back to work fairly soon. And so it's likely that, that he will get back to work. Uh, there's likely to be uh, some need for um, modification of hours and or duties. So in terms of recommendations, um, all vocational rehabilitation programs should incorporate the three components that I've mentioned, healthcare, service coordination, and workplace and employer. Commence soon after the injury or illness. Be individually tailored. Target workers who are at higher risk of delayed return to work. Involve employers and other stakeholders. And encourage stakeholder awareness of the value of work for health and recovery generally. Now, what um, CIRA has done, it's both published uh, the full report on its website, but it's also uh, summarised uh, the findings in this infographic. And so this is a, a slightly more detailed uh, take-home message uh, summary uh, from the rapid review. Sorry. There. So um, you can contact me for further details if needed. So I wanted to uh, finally finish the story for Mary and Bruce. Um, for Mary, unfortunately, uh, vocational rehabilitation remains a work in progress. Um, it's not been possible yet to secure a limited uh, return to work, um, despite, um, in my medical opinion, that she is capable of working limited hours and specified duties. Uh, there are a range of factors, though, that meant that that can't be arranged at the moment. In terms of Bruce, um, yeah, he, he's been back at work and uh, managing his work quite well. Um, unfortunately, he has a residual health problem related to his brain injury, which is meaning that his work does need to be modified on an ongoing basis, but he is working. So thanks very much, everyone. Um, I hope you found this uh, webinar informative. Um, I will be available uh, following this to uh, interact in terms of uh, responding to questions and comments. Thank you. Well, I'm back live and uh, I see that there's a number of questions uh, already. So I'll see how I go. This is quite a cognitive challenge for me. But here we go. So from Kerry first, uh, was a question about um, the best practice healthcare component. Um, I think there's a limited amount extra I can see, but it's about uh, effective health care uh, that's provided in a timely manner and linked in uh, to uh, work and, and what the work requires. Um, so some health care that I work in can deliver that, but certainly some other components can't. 
Uh, the next question is from Dennis. Uh, this is a question about um, vocational rehabilitation being better done in some jurisdictions than others. Uh, I don't think I can answer this well in terms of Australia because I work in New South Wales. Uh, the research suggests that there's quite a lot of variability across the world and uh, there are Australian workers' compensation scheme data uh, that um, are produced on a regular basis that suggests return to work outcomes in some states are significantly better than others. Uh, from Joanne, um, so this is a question about integration of vocational rehabilitation across healthcare coordination and workplaces. Um, so probably the well, the, the Australian example that I know best was, is or was uh, is the Wise study, which was. Uh, in a health um, healthcare setting, uh, hospital setting, and because uh, it was possible to uh, work very closely with workers soon after injury and have support of the health service in terms of reintegration, um, and there was also definitely a risk assessment in terms of non-recovery. Um, that's a good example. Uh, that was a research study, so there will be always issues to what extent that can be uh, sustained in the longer term. Um, so Nalinda's asked, uh, the video's not playing. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we'll need to get back to you uh, about being able to post the, uh, the video at the end of the webinar. Certainly the, uh, the slides will be available. Um, I don't know the technical issues related to video, but we can get back to you. Uh, next question is from Nathan. Uh, I thought I might get this question. <laughs> the question is, um, given the evidence is strong that vocational rehabilitation is effective, why is it not happening? Well, for all sorts of reasons, to be honest. Um, so, um, it, realistically, it's very hard to achieve best practice uh, for lots of reasons. Um, systems uh, are not ideal. Uh, I know the healthcare systems in which I work sometimes work well, sometimes don't. And sometimes you can predict why that's going to happen due to short-term lack of resources, but sometimes you can't. Uh, there are lots of system issues in terms of vocational rehabilitation, as I've tried to, to illustrate. Um, these are all complex interventions with multiple components uh, that usually are not used to working together closely. Um, so yeah, there's all these practical factors and, and that's why I was asking everyone to reflect on their own experience and, and what we can do. Um, so I can make it better to some extent um, and I'll be an advocate for change to, to systems over time. Uh, Lucy's next. Um, Okay, this is about, uh, I think it's about differential effectiveness of rehabilitation programs. For, and the examples given are mental health versus pain. Um, I don't think I, I, no, I'm not aware that there's, that this question's been clearly answered. Um, yeah, so, so I think the, the, the general approach is a generic one. So the, the sort of principles that I've been talking about today um, should be applied uh, across all health conditions. Um, but they, because they're individualized, the, the components are likely to vary to some extent. For example, 
for someone uh, with a mental health condition, say, versus someone with a um, uh, broken leg, say. Uh, and, and so there'll be some difference based on the background health condition, but the general principles will be the same. Um, okay, so I'm just trying to... I think the next one's from Alice. <laughs> it's how to share the um, these insights uh, with uh, with employers. Well, I don't know. I I had hoped maybe there would be some employers on online today. Uh, yeah, so employers uh, have a have a major role. Um, employers in general are, are fairly aware of these issues. Um, uh, depending on the effectiveness of their vocational rehabilitation programs, their workers' comp premiums uh, are likely to vary. Um, so uh, I, my observation is some employers are really good and some uh, are not so good. And uh, in general, larger employers have, have better developed systems. Um, now, I think this is from Nicola, I saw uh, how, who is best placed to do the service coordination? Well, I don't, I don't think I can answer this definitively. Uh, I think it will vary from situation to situation. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. I, I don't think I can give a more detailed answer. It, it, it could be um, a person with a specific coordination role um, who's separate to the other components, but it might be someone with that role that is somehow linked to at least one of the other components, either the healthcare component or the workplace component. Uh, in my experience, at least in New South Wales, it's very rare for service coordination to be able to be linked across all the components. Uh, and then from Philippa. So this is a, a detailed question. Uh, so just I'm trying to take it in. Um, there is a theme, Philippa, I agree, that um, difficult situations can be associated with a medico-legal environment. I think that is true. Um, and so where there's um, dispute uh, in whatever uh, component of the vocational rehabilitation program, that's going to be detrimental to the worker. Uh, Philippa has reflected, though, she works with people with severe traumatic brain injury. And uh, in fact, there, there is um, quite well-developed um, vocational rehabilitation program for people with severe TBI in New South Wales, which is uh, effectiveness. That is effective, sorry. And then the final part of this question is, um, yeah, the effect of compensation on return to work. So we, idea, the ideal situation is that uh, compensation does not lead uh, to uh, disputes and increased um, stress and pressure on the worker. And so uh, I have been involved in research that's more around recovery after motor vehicle crash injury, but that includes return to work. And so uh, compensation schemes can be designed uh, to cause less uh, ne negative impact um, on injured people, including injured workers. And so that, that's, that element of design is to reduce disputes and to simplify processes. Uh, next question is from Alice. Ah, uh, yeah, this is an interesting question about the Erebro. 
And um, the question is, do you repeat the error bro? Um, I've actually asked the same question to Michael Nicholas, who developed the error bro. Um, his view is that it's a good predictor of return to work um, used once, but you can use it um, more than once because it will detect um, if the viewpoint of the worker is changing. And so if you see the viewpoint of the worker is changing, that's likely to indicate uh, a greater uh, possibility of successful return to work. Um, next question is from Joe. Um, sorry, just this system I'm getting used to. <laughs> uh, so th this question is, and I think we're getting towards the end, um, why is there so much trouble implementing these uh, recommendations? Well. That's a good question. Um, my personal viewpoint is that the systems uh, are that systems around vocational rehabilitation, workers' compensation, uh, are very hard to change. There's lots of stakeholders and um, players and parties, and so uh, reform uh, then becomes very difficult. Um, perhaps I should leave it there. So now from Kate, um, she's raised the issue of self-employed workers. Uh, she says it's an area of great difficulty and I, I absolutely agree. Um, <laughs> she's raised the possibility of incentives, um, lack of incentives. Uh, yeah, so I, I think self-employed workers is particularly hard and I would apply the same principles, um, but I, I absolutely agree. I, I don't have all, uh, don't have good solutions there. So the next one might be our last question, I think. Um, okay, so the last question is from Lisa, uh, saying that workers, with uh, CALD backgrounds are often excluded from research. That's true. Um, and as a researcher, there's, um, there are reasons for that. Research is harder. That, of course, that's not a reason not to do it. Uh, and the answer is we did not find um, in this vocational rehabilitation review um, specific uh, conclusions uh, with reference to people from uh, different cultural and linguistic backgrounds. So I'm just getting a message and this will be the last one. Um, so I've got a message. The recording will be captioned and emailed to registrants together with the slides. Um, that'll take a few days and it'll also be published on the CIRA website. So thanks very much, uh, everybody. Uh, I think we'll leave it there. We all need to get back to our afternoon's work. Thank you.